General membership meeting October 18th, 2023. <laughs> 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 yeah. Say it again. 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 And uh, Melissa, do you think you have everything you need for the whole party? Yeah, we've got one, two people in the back row by Ed. See, I'm sorry, I don't know your names. Who are your neighbors there? That's James. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Am I what? No. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, gentlemen. We're the old and metal. Yes, I do know you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Good. All right. Uh, start out. Any additions, changes, or deletions to tonight's agenda? Or just anything? No, nope, we're good. All right. So first thing on our agenda is to approve our general membership meeting minutes from our July 26th meeting. Does everyone have a chance to review those on the website? Any comments? Questions? Do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Sorry. Any discussion? All right. All in favor, aye. Aye. All, okay. All right. We are approved. <clears throat> Move on to item five, the treasurer's report, and Mr. Fry, who is on Zoom. Bill, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Uh, and uh, the Quarterly no. treasures report's been on the um, on. on the website. <laughs> you can hear me. He's not here. Then. Hello. That's a fun yeah. Bill Fry, are you on? Yeah. Can yeah. you hear me? He's still muted. <laughs> there you go. Oh, it says <laughs> it says I'm I'm not muted. I can see the yeah. little green yeah. thing. Your microphone's not working. Or, yeah. I can see, I can see the little green thing. Yeah, we we can hear him. Uh, hang on. They've muted me, Wendy. <laughs> Why don't you move on to the next thing? Well. Oh, you just hear me on this one. Yeah, turn him, turn him down on that so we don't. I don't have a problem with the mute, mute button on my on my telephone, not on the laptop. Okay, we, we got we got you, Bill. Go ahead. And so that's everything about the treasurer's report. There are there any questions? <laughs> one now the treasurer's report's been posted on the website for a couple of weeks. Um, the Probably the key thing is is that the last of the um, of the Ian related recovery costs, uh, the last one that processed was the nineteen thousand dollars to the Island Club. So the Island Access Fund is currently at zero. Uh, the the rest of the details about uh, what the money's been spent on is in the monthly treasurer's updates. Subject to questions, that really is all I've got to say since the party is most important and i'll be there in spirits for mr fry and financials yeah, just for the group i think it, it's it, for those who haven't been connected so back after the hurricane occurred uh, we had local providers of service for that did the cleanup on the island and they weren't able to get paid in a timely fashion while fema fema did their work and so what we did from the board is uh, allocated monies to pay those local uh, contractors to for their work so that they wouldn't be in the lurch until FEMA decided to get around to doing their payments because that takes a long time with the arrangement that once the, the fire district gets paid for those which is who is the, the agent for connecting to FEMA and that money comes back it will come back to UCCA and go back into the deposit of funds so actually we're in a way bankrolling those local pe people because they were getting hosed and it was going to be a long time before they Got paid for all their work. Yeah, sure. Bill, can you speak to that? Is the the process still in play for um, everything except for the Tortuga funds to potentially 
uh, come back to UCCA via the FEMA and fire district process? Yeah, so <clears throat> probably 70 to 80% of my estimated uh, um, expectations from FEMA in reimbursement is um, against not the road clearing bills, but the unapproved insurance claim uh, requirements for the building and the vehicles. And our issue is like some, some of the rest of the island, the fire district's um, insurance carrier uh, provided a very tiny initial settlement. Uh, Fuxa was hired by the fire district to, um, as the public appraiser to, to press for greater reimbursements. But until we see a final reimbursement number or final uh, claim number from the insurance company, I believe that 70 to 80% of, of the expected um, fire department's claim or submission to FEMA uh, is that un, unpaid or unreimbursed uh, loss for uh, against the insurance policy. Uh, and so that still hasn't been resolved. Uh, I, I've been pressing on it the last two months and um, with with um, the chief and, and with the chair as the treasurer for the fire district. Uh, and it'll be a topic again for um, Friday's meeting. Uh, we we now have until the end of or middle of March uh, is the current after multiple extensions is the current deadline. I, I've told um, the fire board I, I would I really want us to pressure pressure. Uh, Fuxa so that we can get an answer so I can close it out by Christmas. And then once it's closed out and submitted, then it takes an apparently an inordinate amount of time for FEMA to make a decision. Uh, apparently, Sanibel Fire District, we got one of their fire uh, former lieutenants retired on uh, as our uh, assistant chief now in the fire district. And uh, he said they've been working it harder than we have because they've gotten their insurance settlements but they still haven't gotten the first dollar from fema so it'll be a oh, while yeah. it, but it's all going to come at once right all fema yes it's inclusive of the fire district stuff which we don't care about in this meeting but uh we do the reimbursement it's, it's one fire district submission to fema right. against the um it, it's called uh re request for public assistance an rpa um okay. So, okay, thanks, Bill. So, sure. it, it, I think the only clarification to what uh, uh, David said, it wasn't just a board decision that decided to spend island access money. We actually took a vote through election buddy of um, of the entire membership and had a very large uh, percentage of, of members that uh, participated in the in the election or the decision, uh, and um, that was why that money was used as the seed money to pay small businesses that we knew would not get paid for potentially a, a long period of time. Well, thanks, Bill. Sure. Uh, to wrap up these scenarios, we, we hope to get the majority of that money back. There's one uh, vendor, uh, Tortuga, who uh, cannot get reimbursed in the FEMA process because of a conflict uh, within the fire district. So, right. Uh, to clarify it, it's a violation of, of uh, Florida statute for uh, a commissioner uh, to receive any kind of financial uh, benefit from the fire district. So FEMA has said that that we have to follow, that they're going to follow the Florida law, which means uh, the Tortuga. Duncan Rosen's work uh, was paid, uh, but it was paid and, and won't be reimbursed at all. all right. uh, any other questions regarding financials, Mr. Fry? All right, on to the next uh, item six is Steve Huber's resignation. Steve Huber resigned from the board uh, a few weeks ago. And for our bylaws, we have an appointment process to fill that seat. Uh, the board uh, interviewed two uh, nominees tonight uh, for uh, appointment, Jeremy Freeman and Tina Goodman. We're going to meet uh, in a special meeting early next week, and we'll make that appointment. Uh, that's to fill um, seat for the additional two years of Steve's current second. Questions, comments? We got a question. Did you yeah. ask about any conflicts of interest? We did. We did. 
They said they did not. So neither of those people have any potential benefit associated with the RFC? Doesn't have anything with the RFC. It's just a general question of conflict of interest. Yes. Yeah. It covers all. Speaking of resignations, um, Alex, you can just stop. <laughs> you, you, you can stop. Every, everyone knows here that you want me to resign, that you think I have a conflict of interest. It's not going to happen. It's an inappropriate place. It's not on the agenda. You've made your piece. Does everyone here understand that Alex wants me to resign as president of UCCA? Well, it was so, not putting the meeting minutes. It actually was putting the meeting minutes. You, 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 can, you, can, you can talk to the person who takes the minutes. I, think I don't take the minutes. I'm a member. I have the right to voice my opinion. And I think there are a lot of members that would also agree with me. Um, I, I don't know. We, we, don't we, hear, we, we hear we hear from you all the time. So we're we're gonna move on in the agenda. If if you want to speak with me after the meeting, I'll talk to you as little as as much as you want. All right. So uh, next is street signs project update. Uh, hold on. <laughs> we have everything. Um, so we're gonna be starting it tomorrow. If anybody wants to come and help, we're going to meet out by the airstrip. We have all the supplies over there. Um, my husband's actually testing one right now to put it up to make sure everything works how it's supposed to work. Um, we brought the signs today, so we have everything to go. And we had um, 811 come out today and mark all the areas to make sure that we're not going to be by any electrical wires. And they talked with LCDC. So we're good to go. Awesome. We got a good team together. Yeah, we have like... Well, signed up right now, which is good. Yeah. If anyone wants to put in some labor the next couple of days, we'll use one. So, um, Anne? Yeah, I'm going to make sure I've got the back board. However, <laughs> do you need another post call for you? Because I can provide. If you do, that would be great. Yeah. you need any more shovels? Shovels and post hole diggers would be great. Okay. If you have a... I'll show up with your hole and post Perfect. Thank you. And where are we meeting tomorrow? We are meeting right um, right off the Sierra, you know, the gray octangular house, um, Terry and Larry. It's their open lot. Okay. We have all this up there, and we'll have a table set up with some snacks. So if you have not signed up to help and you would like to help, you could show us. 8 o'clock is? Yes, I'm starting at 8. There yes. Uh, how, how deep are they going? We are going two feet down, and then it will be six feet above ground. What's her, uh, what's it, four by four? It's a four, so it, it's a four by four going in the ground, and we have now we um did a lot of research and we had cement initially, and now Mark Justice, thank you, if he's here, is going to purchase the cement, and we're doing the foam cement. It sets a lot nicer, and it doesn't um right the beach water, and it doesn't eat away at the uh, four by four, even though it's pressure treated in the long run, it can do that. So okay, and then three and a half inch water. It works on okay. hand drill to go down about a foot and a half. That would be perfect. Anything electrical to help with yeah, the than manual? Post -hole diggers. <laughs> yes. We have one electric one too, and then I reached out to, I think it was Paul. Yes. Well, I've seen a big auger. They're using a little, somebody's got a, like a five inch auger. So that would, I don't think we need it that big. Um, but I know <laughs> Paul Kaskia, he had reached out um, and I had um, emailed him. He had one that goes on. Some machine that he was going to test. We are also putting up a couple um, pilings. Um, if you go down what's called Sea Air right now, that's the other thing. So there's two changes in the road names, and we already uh, contacted the county and we contacted the fire department. Where it's Sea Air along the airstrip, it's now going to be South Airstrip Drive. And then the road that goes from South Airstrip Drive to the Old Barnacles is now going to be Kinsey, Kinsey Lane um, in honor of Mr. Kinsey. Kinsey. Yes. Um, and then we're still trying to figure out the Point House Trail. And the reason why we renamed it is because there was two different areas to get into the Point House Trail. And the one that's coming off of Point House Trail by Barnacles, you can't get through anymore because Safe Harbor put a dock right across there. So we are, there's a lot of construction and stuff coming over there. So we're trying to work with all of those partners, trying to figure out the best place to put where Point House Trail will access. I don't know the 
we have a sign for it, but we're not sure where we're going to put that point house trail one. We might just put it up <laughs> temporarily by the airstrip where the other ones are going to go, um, just so that people know that that's point house trail. Um, but those are the two changes that are happening. Yes. Um, if you're going to use them on the auger, you might want to contact the We did. Oh, you did. They came out today and marked everything. Great. Yep. Yeah, it's all it's all set you to go. Kinsey or South Sierra. We are meeting on <laughs> South Sierra. Gotcha. Well, no, not Sierra. Right, no, uh, it's Sierra. Sierra. It's just Sierra. It's Sierra. And that's where it was so confusing because people would like, even contractors would always be like, where, like, you go to Sierra and then it goes to Spanish Gold and then it goes to Sierra again. So we're like, okay, well, why don't we just rename that street? So that's why we did that. And just a point of clarification from people that are not from Michigan, it was, it was South Airport Road, is that what you said? So, no, north and south. Yeah, so now so there's north, air there's strip, a, yeah, and yeah. south. Yeah, so it's not going to be, it's not going to be south Sierra. Yeah. It's going to be south, south air, air strip. Air strip. The, yes. south, the south slipped right by my so, ears. Sorry. So both both the roads that the parallel that air strip could be air strip named roads. And that's another, there's half the maps have air strip and half the maps have air report. So we went with airstrip because it's technically an airstrip, not an airport. Right. It's a lot. So you can discover a lot when you try to engage. Well, and, and, I, and I do, I do think that for the group too, Paula has and others on the board, but Paula's put a, an immense amount of thought, preparation, work, logistics, sweat equity. Very, very big project. Amen. <laughs> If you look at the, the other thing that we added, people had asked about like maybe different color roads. We were like, well, we were trying to stick with more natural and neutral colors. So what we ended up doing is every every road has a symbol. So if you have a foreign person or somebody who speaks Spanish, you can send them the the picture of what's on the road sign. So like Sierra has like a C, the Kinsey has old barnacle outlined with a B. Um, hummingbird. Spanish, gold. yeah, hummingbird has hummingbird. So they, we tried to do it. We worked together and tried to come up with a symbol for each street name. So you'll have that also, and they're all reflective, so it'll help the fire department and police officers if they come at night. <laughs> and Rum Road is self-explanatory. <laughs> Rum, yes. Rum Road, yes. Right. Cool. Any other questions for Paula and the street signs projects? Okay. What did they actually serve? What's that? What did they actually survey? What, what did they survey? They surveyed CenturyLink and LCEC. Those were the only two underwire lines that when I called 811. Right. Um, for that point, where did you determine the greatest sign coming up? So the majority are going back where the okay. old signs were, except for on the airstrip side, mm -hmm. instead of them being, they're going to be on the side of the fence of the airstrip so that they don't keep getting hit. And so it, you'll come at it and the, the sign will be by the post. Does that make sense no. for the street? I instead just don't of buy the sign in my neighborhood or you're laying on the side of the road right. or missing it. Right. So we know who's going to determine where they're going to go. So we, we went around a week and a half ago with a couple of people in the fire department to see where the best locations would be if, they're, if they were going to change. There's a few that change, but not many. If you want to go look tonight, they're the white signs. They're the white little flags that are up. And then my husband's going to go and mark an X so that everybody knows where to right. dig the post. Again, thank you for all your time and energy on this. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else? Questions on street signs? All right. Next item up is the LCEC project update. Uh, the board we met with LCEC last board meeting or two board meetings ago? Two of them. Last one. Uh, yeah, we had the project manager and we had uh, Trisha Dorn, who's our account rep for the islands, uh, on. They're giving us an update on their project. Um, you know, just to reiterate, and, you know, we did a town hall on this before the hurricane, uh, which with this project delayed. But the um, you know, they're replacing all the transformers, all the lines on the island. So they're going through, you know, digging up every road, putting new lines, new transformers. 
That project's going to go through the end of 2024, possibly into the first quarter of 2025. Um, but we should have way more stable uh, electricity on the island and much easier for them to decipher problems when they happen. Obviously, we know from Medallia coming by and just a little bit of flooding and rain, we were down four or five days um, and they couldn't figure it out. So uh, I haven't heard <laughs> any complaints uh, on the project, uh, but if, if anyone has seen it or heard any issues with LCC in, in the project, then of course, you know, let us know. Right, Andy, oh, sorry. So, so, so on, on that project too, the, you know, again, many people may not have attended in a while in, in the UCCA meeting, but, but the good thing about that project is, is, of course, they're replacing all the infrastructure, electronic, and we know electric infrastructure is bad here. We know the flooding's bad up and down. Uh, a lot of times they're, they're boring under, right? So they're not digging up trenches everywhere. So a lot of times they're boring in that we, did communicate out some of those kind of, they might be disrupting some of your horticulture or not. They're, you're, some people have built things right on the box, yeah. which is a concern. So they're gonna try to reach out and do their stuff uh, on that project to reach out to the, land, the homeowners to yeah. try to not do that or replace the damage that might have been done, have, have to have been done to do it. If, um, if, you, if you have horticulture or you, built stuff within 10 square feet of a box, then it's likely that's going to get destroyed in, in their project. Uh, and then I think the other part that in two meetings ago when we had Trisha on, we really addressed um, a lot of the things we saw from the <clears throat> power situation that went out where we had the outage. And then many of you know, we had partial power in some of the island, parts of the island all the way out, some were still working. Uh, there was always an intent, supposedly from LCC, to communicate out with text messages mm -hmm. or phone calls that they, like, hey, this is the expected time of resolution. We saw a lot. I, I personally saw, and I was the one that was interrogated. I mean, when you were interrogated. I was, I was talking, talking yeah, to Trisha interrogated. only because <laughs> there, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of feedback that came and said like, hey, your your problem's fixed, and it wasn't fixed, and then you had to go open up another ticket. Uh, and then, and so he gave the assumption that somehow that they were thinking either one, they were thinking things were fixed and weren't or whatever. And up two, other people didn't get those emails or the, sorry, those text messages or emails like they said they would, that they asked us to verify before the whole project, the LCC project was going on. Uh, the point there was, hey, we're working in your neighborhood. We're going to communicate via text or phone calls to tell you we're going to disrupt your power so that you could take the action. And the fact they weren't communicating through this, outage time led us to think that it didn't work or it didn't it didn't work and she was doing what she could because she didn't know why but she wasn't aware it was so thank you for those we, we you know people were on the call reinforcing what I my experience was and, and I knew from other things that you guys had experienced it so mm -hmm. I hope they correct that because that's for you know when they're working on a section of the island and they're going to take your power down I want to know that it's getting ready to go out for a period of time and how long, you know, if they can. So I can like turn things off and unplug stuff because I don't want those surges and all that stuff that we get. So, well, so, so the project started the Panama shell, butterfly mm -hmm. shell, oyster shell. We've got some homeowners. Have y'all experienced any issues with the LCC project so far? I would just say on Panama shell, they came through and they set the new boxes and they put the new duct in, but they haven't finished. Right. I don't think anything. They haven't, they haven't pulled any water. No they haven't set new boxes. So, so not even I'm really kind of confused. Yet. I think they're not doing what they said they were going to do, right. which was start and finish sections and then move along the island. Yeah. It looks to me like they're just... Got stuck. Well, yeah, I saw. I saw. A, I saw a survey post that. today over on Bartlett. I was like, I mean, yeah. Well, I've well, like set two boxes of these right yeah. inside of my house. And I, I just didn't go any further down the street. But but um, I, I I what I think that happened that flooding they they blew equipment they had mm -hmm. all kinds of problems yeah. and it was all flooded. They actually on North End had to pull cable over and replace boxes, but they just pulled it over the top because they couldn't yeah. do it in a timely fashion. The trenching that's necessary, so it's all exposed. Not exposed, but it sounds bad, but it's it's insulated, but it's on top of the ground right now. Right. And at some point, they're going to have to go. I, I just I think they just like they they were just doing what they could to get replace boxes, 
full cable, and and I think that disrupted all that, right? All yeah, their all their plan. I think their plan, like yeah, like they, they did said, say they're also uh, still experiencing major supply chain issues with their stuff. So they'll get to a point, and then it's like they can't get what they need for months. Yeah. So. Does anybody know what the flight of power was at last Thursday? I don't. I heard it was I out like seven hours or something. Like that. Somebody well, and it was a and it was just a partial outage, because yeah. right? Wasn't it? Was it? A but, and wasn't the whole island or I don't know that. But that that is but this project now theoretically, what they the engineers told us is we long time ago had a town hall with those guys and they had the engineer on. Really, this is not only going to just replace equipment, but it's going to can do some alternate routing. So there's duals. Like if some thing blows up over here, it doesn't take everybody down the whole chain. You know, it just isolates that for that one place. So that'd be really great too. Any questions, comments on the LCC project? Yeah, I think that's all I have. Moving on, next, number nine is the informational signs and beach access project update, Paula and Bonnie. I don't know how in depth people need to go, <laughs> but it's in the process. We have approval um, from almost every place except for the state park, um, which is the nature preserve and Sunset Beach. Um, I just got an email yesterday that I have to respond to doing this whole survey and what I'm um, proposing for it. Um, so I'm not 100% sure about the signs there, but the other signs are in production. Um, they're ready to be printed, except for we discovered that it wasn't high resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had to redo them all to get them to high resolution to make them not fuzzy when you enlarge them. So thought we would have them done, but they're not. They're working hard. And thanks to Swin and Sean, who is amazing, <laughs> he okay. um, just sent me proof that I, as I was coming over here, I saw it, but I haven't looked at it. So. Um, hopefully by Thanksgiving, we will have these. I'll, I'll be back in Thanksgiving if we don't get on this trip to get these up. And now there's two that are going to be going over on at the Island Club and at Island Girl Charters. On the main. Yes. Any questions? Yes. How many sides are you talking about? So there's one at the Island Club, one at um, Island Girl Charter. There's two on the Dolphin Beach for the airport for the salty approach because they have to have those signs. So they allowed us to put the other information on it also. And then there's one at the ocean side of salty approach. And that's going to be a double sided one because people walk the beach also and for airway issues. Um, there's going to be one at it's called Bartlett Beach is what we called it, that is a state park, that, but it's a public entrance to it. Um, we got permission to put it on the land next to the state park, which you'll still be able to see it. And then there's going to be one, um, I'm gonna say it wrong, it has to be, it's, it's on SCCF. It's on the SCCF property that is south of the uh, Captiva Castaway property. No, and then, we have four smaller signs. Um, there's one road we're still working with for the beach access. Um, we talked to the fire department too. So this will be just four signs. You would have to do the PowerPoint to show that. Is that 12? How much is that? No. The so there's seven larger signs, including the two over there. So five on the island, and then there's four smaller signs. What's the total? 12. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Why are we doing and there's a lot of signs that also that are coming down. Yeah, the, these are mainly replacing signs. So all the ones around the airstrip are replace, are they, replacing are they, old signs. Are they the equivalent replacement or are they distinct? They're, 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 so they're exactly. Bulky thing. Yeah. They're, they're, bulky thing. So they're what, what, they're, they're, what they're going to do is you, the, there'll be two pilings. And then there's going to be an aluminum brace with the sign in between those two pilings with the rope on top. I just, I to inform, so we've had two deaths on the beach, so we want the riptide information, the sea uh, turtle, sorry. yes, the sea turtle information, no golf carts on the beach, no fires on the beach, all the information that people have talked about wanting to get out to the um, visitors. Okay, so and, yeah. We have one more death, one more drive on the beach. I can't prevent that, but if I save one life, I'm happy, so. Have you ever seen the teenagers picking up the gopher turtles and like like messing around with them? And don't you have a sign for the poisonous? Put them down. I understand. 
that the signs stop anything. Anything. Do you have any proof that they don't? I will say that um, we have a few signs, information signs on that people, and they do seem to help. Okay. Okay. You know, especially we have a lot of people who come from other states and other places. Mm -hmm. and I'm sorry. When this was in discussion, that was the part of the board for for Canada, using that as examples. There's okay. There's one question here. Go ahead. Say that there, there's a net increase of maybe two signs on the island. On the island. Well, not if you are you yeah. talking about the sea turtles? Well, What's that? The sea turtles. There's a bunch of. Well, yeah, because the, the, because the all, all the North Carolina sea turtle signs that are out there, those will come down because theirs are now included on them. So we will be taking. So as you can see, these like this is what's there currently. This is what's going to be replacing it. It's actually we decided this is going to go actually go inside here. And what's going to happen here is you have an electric um, box here, and what's happening is that as the fire or the sheriff can say, people are parking on that beach, and there's been a lot of incidents of planes like mm -hmm. causing accidents. So what we're doing is over here we're putting pilings with the rope, and we're making parking. The airport allowed us to make designated parking on the sign, so that's what's going to be going up to so that people will park over here. And the map that we have on the island underneath here, Boats and Fun, Andrew, amazing, made the special maps for us too, shows where there's designated public parking. So you have Sunset Beach, you have the airstrip now on the side, not in front of the uh, airstrip, and then the one by um, Bartlett Beach. Those are all public beach parking that you can go to it. So hoping to alleviate, if you go to the one that's a four sign for the no parking. Oh, if you go to this one. So this is what we're proposing at the um, Sunset Beach. And I'm pretty sure we can do the, we're gonna take down all this wood that's coming in all undone and looks terrible. And we're gonna put the rope so it's consistent with what's out there right now. Um, and then we are hoping to have a sign, but we're not sure about the sign yet. But we are going to hopefully put the rope up to make it look more appealing and people knowing that this is an access um, to it. And then if you go to the, uh, I think it's up the four right here. Uh, it doesn't really show it so well. The reason we're doing it is to help renters? To to add to, well, even people on the island don't aren't aware of the okay. airstrip. So there's there's people who are on the island, like I, we were at our house and we had somebody flying a drone and their toy airplanes on the airstrip and it lands on our scene, on our roof of our house. And we're like, and I thought it was a visitor. It wasn't, they yeah, owned here, the yes, for the airstrip yeah. it says no drones, it, it shows all of that stuff. So it's not just the visitors, there's homeowners because there's a lot of new owner, owners too who aren't aware of all of this information. <laughs> Yeah. Well, mo mo most of the warnings on the sign have ordinances tied to them that our sheriff's department could enforce. You got to catch the person and all like that. So, are people going to break the rules? Yes, they're going to break the rules. Um, so, it's an attempt 
uh, to try to educate people where we can. I'll say that this project has been in place since February. Every board meeting since February, we've discussed it. Every general membership meeting, it's been discussed. This is not new. Yeah. So, so again, I think the the project is what and I go to Jeff's original question. Why? Why the project, like many other things, is a a, a result of the continuous frustration that islanders have with people doing the wrong things and driving golf carts on the beach or doing all the stuff that they shouldn't do or being where they shouldn't be and mm -hmm. claiming they don't know it. Um, the, the, it was, I wasn't involved directly. And again, Paula spearheaded that effort, but many people worked very hard on that mm -hmm. to try to thoughtfully address all of those things in a concise, mm -hmm. um, aesthetically pretty way that would give direction to people mm -hmm. and inform people uh, and also provide the again the like just like the dumping signs right there's statutes that associate that this is actually a crime what you're doing so it's not just willy-nilly so it, it gives someone second like a, a, a hesitation with and so i think everything that they, they to the best they did they she talked about talked to the county and talked to the, the all the, the landowners the best they could all those things for a long period of time to come up with a very well thought out approach that makes our island more I think more uh, friendly to those who are trying to navigate it. So they don't get in the wrong place and they don't end up parking in your yard and they don't end up on the beach and they don't end up leaving their stuff out to for sea turtles to get caught in. So I think that again was the intent was why. So uh, it's kind of this crime prevention principle, you know, it's basically impossible to stop every violation everywhere all the time. So what you look for is strategies that you can use or to, to mitigate harm. So if you get a percentage of people that see that sign, most people that come out here are not looking to thumb their nose at the island residents and do the wrong thing and create the chaos. So if you're communicating to people what the community expectation is and what the law is, the majority of people are going to comply with it because they're just not generally garbage people. They're, they're going to try to, to comply with the community expectation and with the laws. And there's going to be a percentage of people who just don't care. They just want to do whatever they're going to do. But if you can reduce that volume from its current 100% level, with, you know, we got community issues up here that come up all the time. You know, kids driving golf carts, dogs off leash, littering, you know, vehicles on the beach. And these things come up over and over and over again in complaints that we get. So if you can reduce that from its current level to 60% of that or 40% of that or 20% of that, it brings into a, a realm that's a lot more acceptable for you guys as residents. I mean, I, I know that a lot of people aren't happy about the transition to a more short-term rental thing, but that's just the nature of what's happening on the island. So what you need to do is look at ways to manage that and still keep it nice and livable for you guys that are here all the time. And that, that's a step towards it. Wasn't there a parallel effort to provide all the same information in a common renter's handbook. There, that that, that exists. It's a, I mean, it's you know, a digital it's to the point where it's like, look, they get a handbook and they see the signs. Yep. Sheriff comes over and, you know, talks to them. I mean, you know, they'll get the message. Yeah, I'm We're trying to be a YouTube video and some of the rental associates yeah. require them to watch the video before signing the, well, the thing. So where, where is okay. that common um, handbook? Yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's a digital guide that uh, uh, that those who rent their homes are encouraged to to use. And it has all the same. You can also print it, it way, out. Way more than, than this. Yeah. It we is, found most people print. when they show up to their rental houses don't pull out that big thick binder mm -hmm. and right. start mm -hmm. reading through all of the sheets right. that she right. has. Right. 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 So it's better to right. you know, right. expose them to this information and digestible so, ways because the first thing you do is grab a beer and run to the beach not <laughs> get down and read a lot of that's, yeah. that's why we're having the signs at the ferry location before they come over so when they're sitting there and have nothing to do while they're waiting they can read yeah, yeah. i'll yeah. also say real real quick that all the um properties the property owners where these signs are going to be want these signs like like you said salty approach the, the three they'll be they have to have they have to have warning signs they want better signs they want this language just related to the universal guidebook so it's on the website i just scrolled down from the the main on the ucca website but there's a, a digital link here so if you're interested in either okay. you know, if you click up. on it it'll open it up then 
Uh, but it's it's um, a digital, again, an online thing, but people can read it, and do it, and, and use it in their rental homes. Cool. Hey, Sheriff made a point uh, of, of Sandoval using, yeah, 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 right. using a, uh, a video. Um, Rules. Of rules, you know, or something. I've always thought we should have some kind of welcoming packet that <clears throat> that politely tells them, you know, and you know, in a way tells people what they're expecting. You don't have to. Do well, that, that that's sort of the the idea of the two signs. One will be an island girl, and one will be. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the. Like a video. Yeah, if, if I can uh, find the link, I, I think I have a link to the video. Would that, that be something was... that the board would want to take a look at and please produce? <laughs> yeah. or what would be cool is if, like, the, the ferries bringing the people over would play those videos for all the people as they're sequestered on the ferry. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can do a QR code scan on the ferry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 we we've discussed, we've discussed things like that. So I, I definitely think, you know, a, a, a nice welcome video with, you know, our islands. Community standards is appropriate and something that you know the board would definitely look at. But but I think but I think but I think to the to the group it it, it, it should be known though for the last at least period this last I don't know, year and a half before before the hurricane there have been initiatives that the board has taken to try to address these long term issues that in in like the I've been here now in on ECCA the board for almost five years and the same issues that people the irritating things are still in play so we tried to That's do things a rule like, we, or something like this right right, right. And, but, but but it's but it's not there's no magic bullet so what we try to do is implement like the golf cart registry why right? we put it up there do people participate it, it's up to them but it's a tool they can use to make sure that you know people aren't doing the wrong thing or if they do they get caught at it and they report them or whatever we start with these signs or the all these other things, the initiatives, but we're actively trying to make it a multiple because right? one thing won't stop it, and all and maybe all of them won't stop all of it. But if, over time, it, maybe we knock it down a little bit at a time, just keep going. So that video, like that, another effort, but certainly something <laughs> add on. The, the video is a great right? idea, but in, until you get all 180 homeowners who rent. To send it to their renters before they get here and right. they watch it. it it's a right, that's what I say. Exactly. The, 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 the percentage is like these points. It's from 100 to 60%. Yeah. All right, anything else on informational signs? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you mean by the task? What we call the manatee docks or that docks? So the manatee docks, there, the airstrip again is going to at, um, allow us to put a parking area along the fence side so that there's not parking when you turn that corner and right there's a golf cart looking at the manatees. So they allow, we got that marked um, also. So they would put, we put the pilings with a private a public parking over on the side of the fence instead of in front of the manatees. Is that what you're referring to? Or there's people climbing on those docks and trying to pet the manatees and feed them all that stuff. So we have on the signs about the wildlife, we don't have a sign specifically there because that's probably, I haven't talked, I would have to talk to every one of them and yeah. where they would want the sign and what you want the sign to say. So we do have it about wildlife, not touching the wildlife and feeding the wildlife. But sure, right, you're that more and they're all parked there kind of. Right, so we, we now are hoping to put the parking along the fence so that they're parking over there instead of in front of somebody's private. Doc. Until you see they have some uh, preparing signs for, for exactly that. Yeah. So you may just right. want to check with them. Okay. Do them or save the manatee. I mean, they have all kinds of information. So I know the I know the Island Club already has one at their front desk that talks about like you know <laughs> it's a it's I think it's felony it's actually to, to touch them and to feed them, right? So. All right. Anything else on informational signs? Yeah. Right. Next is our island security committee update. Melissa and then Hello. Oh, hello. Caroline. Sorry. Oh, hi. Uh, this is Ann Caroline. I'm sorry. I've been waiting for y'all to call on me with a raised hand. But um, anyway, I understand that you all have changed the name of Point House Trail to Kinsey Avenue. Oh. And I was just wondering by what 
authority, you guys have permission to change street names. And have you changed any other ones? So we changed the Sierra along the airstrip to South Airstrip Drive. And the only point, point House Trail is still there, but you can't access Point House Trail from where it's located, seeing Point House Trail going to Barnacles. You can't get through to the other side of Point House Trail. So we talked with the fire department, we talked with the um, county, and they were okay with us changing just that one strip by the barges and whatever is coming at the end of it, if it's another restaurant or not. That's the only strip that's Kinsey Lane. And then Point House Trail, we're waiting to see from Safe Harbor, Duncan, and the Yacht, hopefully I can say that, the okay, Yacht Club. Um, what where an entrance is going to be because right now where the road is it's not really a road somebody made it a road into the point house trail or the majority of people who are on that end of the island go to but i don't know where they're going to make the official road or a trail or what they're going to do but right now you can't get through point house trail from barnacle area so is the county changing the names of the roads to South Airstrip Drive and Kinsey Lane? Yes, so we have to, once they are up, we give it to the fire department. The chief, Jesse, Jesse is going to um, then turn it in and they will change all of the information at the county. Are you planning on changing any other road names? No, just, the, just those two. And when did, when did you do this? Bill Kinsey, who was one of the found, basically found the yeah. So Bill Kinsey, Bill Kinsey yeah. mapped yeah. out Jose's hideaway, which. That's the first name, first road name, and that first. No, the Arthur's way. Arthur's Way? No, there's no way. No, there's no But it says Arthur's Way. Yeah. Arthur's Way. No, there are no road. The rip. The road. The rip. 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 Becoming South Airstrip uh, has no properties. No property. Yeah. 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 Cool. Anything else on the Is Anne done? informational signs and stuff? Is Anne done? I don't know. Yeah, I think you answered the question. Okay, I should have asked. Oh, cool. All right, so next on the list, island security. 
Okay, so if you don't know, um, we have a pity we started and we meet, well, now it's monthly. At first, it was every couple of weeks to figure out exactly what this was going to look like to address some of the security concerns that we've had, especially over the last year with, you know, stealing things or most of it has been, you know, what we've discovered are annoyances or disturbances, not true crime that's happened. And so we're trying to help alleviate some of the calls for with, you know, the, the sheriff's office and to kind of maintain a little bit more control ourselves. So what they have, they have a civilian support unit and we have John Flight is our first guinea pig. He's going through the training in the background. <laughs> we okay right now. You know. Um, so he's going through the, the training and the background check to see, you know, how to become um, a civilian support unit, which they'll be, it's not really a uniform, but you'll have kind of a. Oh, it's a uniform. It yeah. is a uniform. Okay. Yeah. It's um, a white shirt, uh, patches, uh, spruce colored pants, and has sheriff's patches and everything. Mm -hmm. So if, if there are some annoyances on the island that really don't need the police to come break it up, here's somebody who is capable of handling the situation, you know. Um, in a, in a really... Um, and to be yeah. eyes and ears on, on the eye. In a friendly, right. in a, in a, in a friendly in a way. way. So yeah. yes, you're, you're, you've got rowdy renters or whatever. They're going to go and say, hey, you know, have a good time, but keep it cool, whatever. So they're learning how to do that. So we're trying to find a few people who are on island a lot of the time who can maybe also be included in this program. And so if you're interested, you can certainly... Um, um, notify one of us but John's you know really trying to figure out how this is going to work we're hoping by February we can have at least John you know in the mix so when we start to see more visitors coming and the spring break roll around that we can um, help address some of the concerns um, so we're another thing that we're doing is um, we've got a golf cart best practices so, you know, we can't, we can only do so much legally and we can yell at people and whatnot, but we do, you know, again, we've got more reminders. Um, we're going to put signs everywhere. I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> um, no, we're going to have on our website. So if you, have, if you have, I mean, even if it's, you know, your family, if it's, if you rent your house or you just have occasional guests, you can put a cling on the window, you can put a sticker, you can put a magnet, or you can have a card that you can include in your welcome book or whatever it is. So we'll have some tools that you can help use. And it's just a little graphic. So maybe it's a little easier um, to do that. So we're working on that. It's not up yet. Well, I'm sure you'll hear a ton about it when, when we do get that up. Um, another thing that we're working on is no dumping. So we just had some issues today, as a matter of fact. Um, and so we're, there are some yard signs that we can put, you know, around construction areas. But we're really going to try and educate also flyers that are going to be in English and Spanish. But we really want to educate homeowners and we're going to get the word out that if you have landscaping done, if you have construction or anything, really it's up to you to get the dumpster, to get the bags, to get whatever it is. So give them a place to put that stuff in advance. Don't ask them, you know, because it never works. So um, and so that's that's some of the things that we've been working on. I'm also we're trying to get our, our language um, appropriate so that we're not saying, oh, you know, you're going to be tased by Melissa if you do this. <laughs> yeah. They're not allowing me to do that, so um, we're getting that approved. Is that here earlier? Is it a felony for someone to be dumping? For commercial, if it's a commercial uh, operation, then yes, any quantity of material that they dump is a felony. Yeah. And so I think a, big, a good way to head this off is to get, you only have so many people <laughs> that are out here doing landscaping. And as long as they understand that, and there's really only two ways that they can get rid of this waste. One is to shred it and spread it because you cannot, even with permission, you can't maintain a big brush pile of yard. It's a violation of uh, building land use codes, but it can be shredded and spread across like mulch. So that's one way they can dispose of it. The other is dispose of it like every other person in Lee County does and have it sent to the transfer station to be disposed of out basically the dump. Awesome. And you it's, it's obviously it's a more expensive process. You know, for years, people have just been creating these Viking funeral fires in every vacant lot out here because it's convenient. And what was it, two years ago or so, the fire department, recognizing the hazard of that, got the code enforcement and started notifying homeowners, well, mostly vacant lot owners, that they had violations of maintaining these brush piles. So that's where a lot of the interest in these dumping activity things came in. 
because absentee owners are getting billed for code violation. They haven't been here in 20 years. They just pay tax. So as a property owner, if if I don't have signs on my property that say no trespassing, no dumping, there's don't no, I don't have any legal recourse. No, no, you don't need to have those because it's I a residential don't. property. You know, so that kind of goes without saying in the curtilage of a normal residential property. So curtilage would be like the, the normal use part of your yard. What you would just accept it on the lot sides we have out here as your yard. Well, yeah. so if I have an so if you have lot, open land, like, right. like like 70 acres of open land or in the middle of the woods, <laughs> you have to post it. But you know, if you're talking about the curtilage of a residence, you would not have to. Oh, okay. That's yeah. like a small vacant lot. So a small vacant lot, you don't have to post signs on it to be able to have to call you guys to be able to prosecute you against people. No, no, dumping. you're dumping. No, because the, the thing is, like, they that's... can only dump in places where that are legal to dump it. So if they don't have the express permission to put that there, they're committing a violation. You know, now we <clears throat> probably need a complainant for it. So we have to, you know, figure out who the owner of the property is and they have to, you know, sign a complaint um, to prosecute. But yeah, I mean, you can't just go around and find some empty space and throw stuff there. It's it's not a you can dump it anywhere that you haven't been told to. There's two specific things you can do with it. Mm -hmm. Shred it and spread it onto a property you have permission to do that with, or send it over to the county solid waste. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank that, you. That's the only two options. Okay. Thank you. So, no sign here for homes or vacant homes. That's it. That's okay. okay. Well, listen, um, you said yes. you were going to be trying to notify homeowners. Are you going to try to also have a parallel uh, effort uh, for these construction companies? Because that's where I see more dumping. That's it. Um, I mean, it's not that many. I mean, a handful, but. Are you and we do there? have like some regulars that we can talk to for sure, and we'll we'll be doing that. But um, <laughs> just kind of having, you know, some like when we see new construction out, like Not new construction, I'm talking remodeling. Right. Well, yeah, that, that, that's so the idea of the, of the flyers is, is handing it to workers, right. like literally going on site. Not workers, but the owners, you know, all the owners and the workers, so they know that it's violation of the dump. Because the owner of the house is paying to get it done. They, they think it's going on bars, it's going to somebody else's yard. Right? And so the, the law actually isn't just for the person dumping it, it's dumping or causing to be dumped. Ah. Uh, so if, if the profit, the owner of the company is telling some guy he's paying six dollars an hour, go <laughs> dump it on that lot. Uh, uh, yeah, the six dollar an hour guy is committing a violation, but so too is the company who is telling them to do it. It's and totally likewise, as, as a property yeah. owner, if yeah. you're directing people to buy it. To go put it somewhere that you don't have permission, and they say, "Well, hey, the guy who hired me in this property told me to do it." No, they, they, that they, could be a problem. They, 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 they don't. They're not. That's right, not. Exactly. Not, they're not they're not, they're they're not, I mean, that's that's part of it. Is as a homeowner taking charge of your project and like that, 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 yeah. well, 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 you have to make sure. So personal responsibility is out the window. You can't just put it on someone else. Myself, it's six hundred dollars back. That's more of a problem than home. And that's where I like to hear your feedback on this because you know we're gonna try and do what we can. But if I'm missing it, no, no, I really want to hear like, okay, these people, did you talk to them? Like, you know, maybe we missed there is a better way to to communicate with you know Bill Price got his hand up real quick. Bill. Melissa said it correctly, and then she was kind of shouted down. From my perspective, uh, owners that, that contract to have their materials with their vendor, with their construction or landscape company, that contract for them to take care, properly take care of the uh, waste disposal are part of the problem. In my mind, Melissa said it correctly that if we have work being done and we're contracting for it, don't pay the contractor to do disposal. Take it on yourself to buy or or position uh, debris boxes, debris bags, uh, containers for them to put it in and you take care of getting it off the island. Because if you pay them to do it, they may just put the money in their pocket and dump it on somebody else's land because that's pure profit to them. And we have to have someone figure out who did it. Take responsibility for your for your own projects, whether it's landscaping, construction, 
renovation or whatever it is. Don't keep including your debris removal in the contract you pay to the contractor. Because if you keep doing that, you're going to be part of the problem. So I think one, one strategy that's worked on that is, you know, if you aren't able to dispose of it yourself, if you do include the disposal in there, uh, I would recommend that you create either a separate billing under there, under the contract for the removal, or at least require them to provide a receipt for the disposal um, and that they won't be paid for that disposal until they provide a receipt. And that does two things. So I call it make sure that they are properly and legally disposing of it. And it also gives you an idea how much they're running up the bill on you. So, uh, but, but that has been something that's worked pretty well for us to, to address that because especially after the hurricane, we saw that a lot on Sandville and Captiva where these guys are getting paid for disposal. And then they're driving two streets over and dumping it on the side of the road for FEMA to pick it up. And yeah. so that, that in addition to being literate, to being dumping, is also a fraud because they took money to do that job with the disposal and they didn't do it. So uh, I, I just think, you know, just consider if you can't manage the disposal on your own with a known contractor out here, uh, make sure to include the requirements to provide receipt. Melissa? Yes. It's Aunt Caroline again. Hey, um, Duncan and I have worked out with JD and Leslie a system where we number the um, upcoming, uh, you know, all in a bags and we are photographing them as we take them off the island. So you would be able to actually verify, you know, using that, just, just so you know, uh, people would be able to verify kind of what was in it. I mean, we're not gonna photograph everything in there, but we will take a picture that shows the number on the bag and kind of shows what's in it. And I'm sure you could talk to Duncan and have him, you know, take a picture from the the um, lull or something that shows the entire top of the bag, if that's helpful. Thank you. Anything else? Any questions? For the security committee, yeah, so. brings us to the last thing. Uh, board members, any other business? Yeah. So, um, so, so this will be my last general membership meeting. Maybe speaking y'all. So, so this will be my last membership meeting. General membership meeting. I'm not running for re-election um, in this upcoming election. I've been a board member for I don't know about five years, uh, and I want to thank the the general membership for um, electing me and letting me serve you. Um, I I think the I think it's important for the the group to understand that. <laughs> I'm not running. I'm not running for re-election. And oh, I'm not going to start again. Sorry. And so, so, so I think it's important for the membership to understand that the the UCCA is a um, the board of the UCCA is a re it's representative government. It's like the fire board. This is and so uh, when we have representative government, just like we do in our country in other places, uh, you're electing board members to take action and to be responsible and doing the uh, doing things. Uh, they're, they're getting feedback from the membership, but it's not, this is not democracy. Meaning it's a democratic form of government, it's representative government. That means that the board are voting and taking action on the input of the membership. The way we get input from the membership is separate calls directly to us or to, to in some cases, you know, attend these kinds of meetings regularly. Uh, all those communication emails are on the on the website. You you know, mm -hmm. so, you know put your input in there. Uh, we present. We have the board has tried to present these topics over time, over time, over time, over time, uh, and trying to be a good representatives uh, of the of the island as a whole, the membership. Uh, and what and and so that has to work in a way where you guys are are feeding back. To the, to the board members, but understand that board members should be taking action and, and an active board, they're taking action. And everybody individually may not agree with everything that's taken. And 
we don't always agree or the board doesn't always agree. So there are discussions about topics and this is how the UCCA works. Um, now the challenge here on the island is, is that there is no government, right? There's not a mayor and there's not the, the some other group that sets the laws and bylaws outside of Lee County. So it's always gonna be a struggle that every, if we wanna take any action as an island doing the best we can to gather as much feedback as we can, the road signs, for example, we could bicker and talk about crap like we have for the last 10 years and not do anything, or we could eventually find a way we can find the middle ground and do something. We've taken the, the, the more active role to try to do something, but gather input all along the way for months and months and months. And it's it's discouraging for a board to have worked that hard and then at the last minute say, wait a minute now, wait a minute. Now I, I I know it's you know I haven't heard anything about this thing, and so it's challenging. Uh, and so I've done my best to serve the membership as a whole over this time. And so when I when I step away, it's not because I'm angry or mad or anything else. I I have a lot of priorities, things I I've let go because I've done a lot of invested time in UCCA. I want to refocus on that, but you know, be an active part of UCCA or volunteering or whatever. I just want to encourage you guys to, to feedback to the board members, but understand the board is representing the membership as best they can, trying to do what's best for the island as best they can. Well, they never make mistakes, yes, just like any other group. But we are collectively discussing these in depth and, and hammering these out over months and months and months. We meet every month. Those board meetings you can attend, you don't participate There's a, because this is not a democracy. This is a representative board. This is a challenge to some people and, and more just like the fire board. Fire board's not a democracy either. We've got five, five guys that are supposed to be representing the membership and they do their business. Uh, that's why you elect. And this opportunity now comes that you will do an election. We'll soon be sending out the notices for members to, to you know, get ready. You're gonna get your ballots. Uh, people can submit their, their uh, interest in candidacy because there are gonna be three, both, three seats filled so my my spot, Swin spot, and Bill Fry spot are as they rotate. You know, each year there are three. So this year there are three, uh, and so those candidates get compiled up, and you'll get a ballot, and you'll have one secure vote each for each person, two per household altogether. Uh, and you should consider that your represent you know, the people you want representing you, and I think that's important. And this is not for or against anybody or anything. I'm just saying this is how this organization works. Um, and I think that's important because that you. I'd like to thank David for his hard work this this last uh, five years, especially the last uh, three that, that I've been on the board. So he, he is probably after Swin, I think probably, and, and Paula now with those road signs and beach signs and beat up signs and everything those the, the those three are probably the, the the ones that have done the most work this last year especially since ian so i'd like to to add my thanks for david's hard work and dedication any other i'd like to bring something up there i think the uh, one thing that's i think a topic we should bring up to maybe do something about, um, and I'd like to maybe donate something like this, just as I'm donating to the that Pink Flamingo Beach House, because I think it's important to be on the Beach But they're, um, right now we're having a flooding issue on the North End. It has a lot to do with the FEMA people in the airstrip. And also, actually, it's flooding more from the Barnacle side, too, because mm -hmm. as they dug up the trash, they lowered the elevation, just like they lowered the elevation in. We really need to bring sand and shell in, maybe even some rock, but we, we need to build that up so we don't have this issue. And, I think as an island, we need to get together and raise some money and make this happen. Yeah, I had a couple of homeowners on Kingfisher reach out to me last week. Yeah, yeah. I think it's time. Uh, they, they really changed the landscape and it's really showing at high tide. So we need to bring that back so we can get by. I need to fill in that little, there's like this big lake we could go through right by the corner yeah. as you go past Islander, you know, in Lucas's area there. That's really a problem when it, when it gets deep. So it, it's, it's just wrecking all our parts. So either we, we fix it now or we pay for our own golf cart repairs. So it should be something we should, everybody should be able to pitch in for. And I'll definitely be a, 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 someone that wants to put in some money. Real quick, uh, yeah, I, uh, 
Thank you for bringing that up. Because I was about to say, uh, I agree. A um, couple of comments. When that floods, it's not fresh water from rain. It is salt water. It's driving your carts through. You better go right back and hose the undertakers because your cart's going to be disintegrated. Um, it's really, really bad. Yeah, so it's like it's, it, either you either we all spend the money now or we're all just spending on exactly. Cars. You're going to be buying a new car in yeah. short order. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the question I had, um, I remember 10, 12 years ago, the uh, we had a, the road commission tested crowning the road, and they were doing they were working between the fire station and um, uh, Sierra Lane. Um, they did some, do you remember this? They, they did some sample crowning and they put, created a swale and then it just stopped. And we never went ahead. I don't know. Well, they actually they did. did. They actually did. They put a bunch of flood down. I know AJ and a few others. I know Michael, you were probably part of that when they, and Martin Justice, when they, they did raise that up. They did quite a bit of work there, actually. It did help for quite a while, but we I guess we need something like five times, 10 times the well, size. Well, we need a lot of sand and shell and rock to basically raise it above, at least in those two areas, to bring the elevation up enough so that the tide is high, it's not coming above the edge, so it can't flow in. Yeah. Real quick, at the end. I was just going to add, you know, at the end of the, the, the airstrip, there's tons of sand there, and I, and that's not where we must contact the airport folks to see if So the airstrip is starting, to, they're starting their project in the next couple of months, and they are adding all of that. Like, it's a major undertaking that, that they're, they're raising it and trying to do all of that also right. with right. that. Sand, but, but they're bringing they're bringing in a lot too. Honestly, because the project we're going to do about it's all hearsay, but think they're going to have a bunch of sand. They're planning on using a bunch of sand. I think that in two weeks, they're going to decide the hydraulically that that's not the way to go. Fix it. The airstrip. Yeah, so they might have more sand than they need. Yeah, I'm not sure. 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 Yeah, i uh, the, the, we're getting money, or I think there's going to be some money to coordinate from the DRC guys that just left, right, to repair some things. It's not, it's not the holistic solution yeah, that they, you're well, talking about. Mark Justice, is but, in but of Mark Justice <clears throat> did, they did successfully find, I think, a, 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 you know, some magical bullets there along Kingfisher Project, but it's not <laughs> sand, right? It's, it's, it's a mix. It's pit shell. It's certain stuff that holds up. It, it bakes down. It packs down. So it's not a sand thing, although the beach might be a thing, right? There's there's a problem because the beach is eroding on the west end. No, east, the east, east end. end. The east end. What happened is they when they brought the barge in, they took some of that sand and made a sandbar. Right. And that that sand is like they put it part of that barge next to that little sandbar. That 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 little hole there, that's where the sand came. Right. They so, so they basically stole water so, sand. Right. So so I think there's a there's, there's that's that, it's, there's a holistic get issue here, but there's some budget in the fire district for roads, right? That's a good thing. Uh, some money coming from DRC, which is a good thing. But there's definitely going to be some need for investments just like I think later before. More. I know we need more. But, but I'll be I'll be candid since since I'll be candid. Uh, <laughs> I think that the now the, hur the hurricane displaced some of the focus on the roads and it clearly did some additional damage to the roads. But I think the fire district lost the big resource in AJ and his willingness and focus on that. And mm -hmm. I don't think that's been replaced. So I think really that's, well, I'm yeah, not they, blaming it all the fire well, district. I'm saying that. To, um, and if anyone's listening, I'll probably just to hire someone. I, I know they don't need an AJ to focus on or whatever. They just need to hire someone. Say so set a budget or something, they, you know, grades once but, a week. Right. But there. somebody, but it, somebody has to oversee that. Project. Okay. But maybe but, I should go to that possibly. Right. But someone has to oversee that work. That was what AJ was doing. And that yeah. role has not been placed, I don't think, just because there's yeah. been so many people. Some hire a contractor and yeah. just sort of oversee yeah. the work a little bit. And even the island could get feedback on bills, you know, bills, but something like that. But anyway, I think we need to raise some more money for that. And I don't know, maybe we could get together with, I don't know, with Mark and Van and me or whatever, and maybe see what 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 the what how much money they have what they can do and then figure out what needs to be done I, and then I agree. we can get a number yep. and perhaps do a fundraise yep. to raise money for because I think this this is a really important item that like affects everybody's 
One, their, their golf cart costs, and two, their property values. I mean, really, one of the things I never accomplished in, in the board that I always wanted to do, but I couldn't get any traction with it, is that it seems like the, the heavy equipment from the contractors is significant input, like impact on the roads. There should be some manner of fee, but I don't know. There's no, there's no, there's no entity. There's no, there's no entity. 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 There's no There's no entity. 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 There's no Unfortunately, we haven't had a contractor like that that right. is, is willing to step up and be part of the community that way. So we're going to have to step up. Has anybody from North Cap team group been a part of any of the resiliency task force meetings or anything like that? I've uh, had a lot of focus. A, a few of them. Yeah, there's a lot of focus on resiliency. I mean, you guys are part of the county. You might want to see if there's anything available for you not through those efforts. I know, just the guy. <laughs> <laughs> And so what I just want to make a small comment about with everything being said here. I agree with everybody. And we had a meeting with uh, Commissioner Lorraine here. And the last thing stated was get back to me with two or three things we can really help you with. Right. And I'll bet see if I can get you the money. Yeah. That's I don't it. think Thank anybody's you. gotten back to it. Well, we'll I, give that not, not yet. I think that that would be probably one of our, if we're going to get funds from the county. That's probably one of our primary issues that but really need them. No, no, see, they're not. It's private. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's the right. Right. Yeah, they're not just people on our case. DOT, but as a, as a matter of... Like, yeah, it's part of the business. It's part of the business. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a different... Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Right. That's you don't ask them. Yeah, exactly. I think you have the right angle there. there uh, I mean, and, and you got to strike till the iron's hot. Yes, yeah, so, that's so, right about there. So, yeah. so yeah. Else, if, if if you don't want to do it, to maybe get with me. I can at least hook me up the right people. I yep. can yep. maybe try to create a relationship with this guy. I don't know if you have one already or else does, but I think we need to. Get, this is a big issue. Yep. So, um, yeah. One reason for the fire department to be in charge of this is they tax. Everybody, you don't have to depend on you making a donation, you making a donation. I don't think everybody no. is. Yeah, there, there's not enough. We really don't have enough funds to do anywhere. Near. This is a big steel project, yeah. and it needs yeah. like we have a budget like what 60,000 a year for the normal road or 70,000 a year for the normal road. 50, yeah, right. 50. yeah so it's 50,000 yeah. dollars. This project's going to cost well over 50,000, I think, just for the sand, sand and shell is very expensive, and the rocks are very expensive. Yeah. It's like two. I was right now. It's like two hundred fifty dollars for a bag of sand, three by three, and save ten bags of sand aren't going to really even dent it. We need to really bring it up and do it right, and everybody will benefit. No pride, Billy. You got a comment? Couple. The um, as as it finally turned around, folks uh, said that uh, the fire district uh, has. Uh, as the only taxing authority on the island, has but been doing roads for about six years now. There's about 50, I think it's $50,000. It's the same amount of money that's been budgeted by past boards for the last four or five years. There's $50,000 in the budget again for this fiscal year. As someone mentioned, uh, the hurricane uh, and more correctly, I think, the debris removal process did significant damage to the roads. But uh, as even AJ's viewpoint was uh, for road work, most road work was not done until after the rainy season was complete. So almost all of the road work was done uh, but typically between uh, January 1st and the, the beginning of spring break. If you have concerns about the roads, I think there is a email address called roads at uppercaptivafire.org, or you can send an email to Van Hammond. He is Commissioner Rhodes. It's a monthly topic on uh, the fire board meeting. We'd be really glad for folks to uh, reach out to Van or to reach out to any of the commissioners or to even, you know, attend a meeting and talk about what your concerns are about the roads. The last thing I'll say about the roads is that um, the fire district is is really the only organization on the island where you can make a tax deductible donation uh, to do road work. Even the UCCA is uh, not that kind of an organization that can give you a receipt for a tax deduction. 
So if you have concerns about the roads and we're getting towards the end of hurricane season and soon we're going to be going into dry season when presumably road work is going to restart and it's $20,000, I think the DRC has contracted with MAG uh, contracting to do some repair of the, of the damage that they did as part of debris removal. The time to reach out is now and, and you need to reach out to Van or I prefer Van rather than me, but but any of the fire commissioners, Van is Commissioner Rhodes. That's his project. And he should be restarting that that work with MAJ. Uh, I believe the fire district is going to start having a, a, a seven or eight hour per week or per two week uh, resource uh, that's doing uh, road, road grading um, on a recurring basis. And that will, again, will start after rainy season. Doesn't do a lot of good to pull the, pull, to loosen all that stuff up and then have the roads flood and float all that uh, sand away. So have concerns, roads at uppercaptivafire.org or go to the fire district's website uh, to the board of commissioners and click on Van's email address. He will love to hear from you. Well, maybe not, but better him than me. Thanks, Bill. Anything else? Good. We have a motion. Move we turn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Y'all have a good party. Yes.